Uh, yesterday, I posted a video on uh, Trump's election prospects in Florida for 2020, which I think are very bright. Matter of fact, what I predicted was he would win by somewhere between 250 and 350,000 votes. I wanted to do Michigan next. It was my plan, but Michigan doesn't track voter registration statistics, so I couldn't do that. So I moved on to Pennsylvania, which is another important swing state and the state where I was born. I'm originally a Pennsylvanian from Philadelphia, so I thought that would be interesting. And what I found in Pennsylvania was almost a duplicate, although the scales are different, of what's going on in Florida. And having done Florida and Pennsylvania, I already see some patterns developing that I'll talk about in the final section of this video, if you stick with me. Let's begin, as I did with Florida, in 2008. In 2008, Democrats held a 1.2 million voter registration edge over Republicans. That's a lot. 1.2 million. Not surprisingly, Barack Obama was elected president in 2008, beating John McCain, the Republican. What's interesting is he only won by 600,000. Now, 600,000 votes in Pennsylvania is a lot. I don't mean in any way to diminish his victory. But you have to ask the question, if they had a 1.2 million voter registration edge, why didn't they win by something like that? Why did they only win by half of that amount? Now, there, there are a lot of reasons for that. That would be a whole other video to the extent to which I know something about Pennsylvania. A lot of people register as Democrats but vote Republican, especially in cities like Philadelphia, which are controlled by the Democrats. And I know that for a fact because my father was one of them. I knew other people, too. But that, again, that would be another video, so I won't go there. But right away, you see that you basically have a 1.2 million edge. It doesn't really translate into a 1.2 million victory. You know, as the old saying, you, can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You can lead a Democrat to regist register, but you can't make him vote Democratic. I mean, that's basically what the lesson is in Pennsylvania, and it's, it's big time. Now, what happened over the next four years between 2008 and 2012? What do we see happen? Over those four years, Barack Obama's first term, if you think back to it, you remember it was pretty hectic there for a while. Remember the Tea Party? Remember the election of 2010, the midterms? Republicans retook the House. Remember the slaughters that went on in the states? I lived in North Carolina at that time. For the first time since Reconstruction, Reconstruction of the 19th century, Republicans took the governorship, the Senate, and the Assembly in North Carolina. This was earth shattering. This was a revolution in North Carolina. All this was happening during Barack Obama's first term. What was happening in Pennsylvania with voter registration? The Democrat edge was dropping. Now, it didn't drop that much considering how big it was, 1.2 million, but it dropped to about 1.1 million. They lost about 100,000 voters to the Republicans. Not surprisingly, in 2012, when Barack Obama ran for re-election against Mitt Romney, who didn't run a particularly inspiring campaign, Obama won again, and it was pretty big, but only by 300,000. Now, that, that's a big victory, but con consider he had won by 600,000 four years earlier. Now, you can say, well, you know, they lost some registration edge. They lost 100,000. So you might have thought maybe he'd lose by 500,000, but he actually lost by 300,000. So that's a pretty big erosion of Democrat support for Barack Obama at the end of his first term. Obviously, Although the media portrays, you know, Barack Obama as you know, one of the greatest presidents we've ever had. He, he saved the country from disaster and everything. If you look at Pennsylvanians, and this is true of Floridians too, that's not the way they were seen. They were starting to swing from the Democrats to the Republicans, and they, weren't, they were voting even more than they were swinging with how they registered from Democrats to Republicans. So that Romney, despite the fact that he ran a pretty pathetic campaign, actually cut the margin of victory from Barack Obama, by Barack Obama, from 600,000 to 300,000. And that's where things stood uh, at the end of, of 2012. Now let's move ahead to the next election, 2016. 
Now, if you look at the previous four years, Barack Obama's second administration, what we see is the hemorrhaging of Democratic registration support doubling. During the first Barack Obama administration, first four years, Democrats lost 100,000 of that 1.2 million voter edge, registered, registered voter edge. During the second term of Barack Obama, that loss doubled. This time they lost 200,000. So that by the time we get around to the election of 2016, they had lost 300,000 of that 1.2 million voter cushion. And remember, the 1.2 million voter cushion only gave them a 600,000 vote lead in 2008, and a 1.1 million cushion had given them a 300,000 vote edge in 2012. Now in 2016, they've lost a total of 300,000, which was basically Barack Obama's margin of victory in uh, 2012. So you might think going into 2016, just looking at the registration numbers and how things voters turn out in Pennsylvania, that the Republicans would have a good chance of at least breaking even or actually winning. And surprise, that's what happened. Trump won by, I think, 74,000 votes. Less than 100,000, but just about what you might have expected. And again, you can see the pattern here. 2008, 12, and 16 is one of steady decline in Pennsylvania for the Democrats. The registered voter edge is slipping. Voter turnout is slipping. And usually turnout comes before registration. I mean, people will vote Republican before they'll go to the extent of re-registering as Republicans. I mean, I can remember when I first started voting Republican, I wasn't registered as a Republican. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it was years before I registered, actually registered as a Republican. I don't think I registered as a Republican until I moved to North Carolina. But by then I'd been voting for uh, Republican presidential candidates since uh, 1976. So th there's usually a lag between the two. So you can see what's going on. You know, you could, if you just look at the numbers, Hillary Clinton was going to have a tough time in 2012. And if she won, it would be very narrowly. If she lost, it was probably going to be narrowly. And that's what happened in Pennsylvania. But it's all almost pre predicted if you look at the trends going back to 2008 over that eight year period. So what's it look like in 2020? Since Donald Trump became president, despite what we hear in the media about people don't like him, they're turning against him, they're flooding back to the Democrats, that doesn't show in Pennsylvania. If you look at what's going on in the last four years, the Democrats have lost another 200,000 voters from their registration cushion. They're, they've gone from 1.2 million edge in 2008 and they're down to about 700,000 now. That's a half million votes. A half million votes, that's a lot. And remember, Obama only won by 600,000 in 2008. He won by 300,000 in uh, 2012, and Hillary lost by 70,000 in 2016. So since 2016, far from tr Trump hemorrhaging voters in support, if you look at what's going on on the ground in Pennsylvania, just as I looked at what was going on on the ground in Florida, Republican support is growing. They've gained another 200,000 votes in Pennsylvania. Now, Trump won in 2016 by 70,000. If you look at the patterns going back to 2018, it would be easy to predict that this time Trump's going to win by about a quarter of a million votes say between two and 300,000 votes. Last time he won by 70,000. That's what the registration numbers and turnout projections suggest to me. Again, as I said in the last video, I ain't Nate Siller and I'm not a pollster. And I'm looking at polls here. I mean, we know, if you wanna know why polls are inaccurate, look at the voter registration in Pennsylvania. Why did Barack Obama in 2008 win by 600,000 votes when, according to the projections from the Democrat registration edge, he should have won by 1.2 million? It tells you right away, people lie. If they lie on their registration, how, what they're, they're going to do, they're going to lie to pollsters too.
That's why you can't really rely on the polls anymore. People aren't telling the truth to the pollsters. They're not telling the truth to the, the guy at the DMV or wherever they go to register either. They'll register one way and vote a different way. So basically, what Joe Biden faces is an uphill battle in Pennsylvania. He's he starts with a position where the Democrats has lost by 70,000. And since then, they've hemorrhaged another 200,000 voters. Which means he's, it's, he's got to do really well in Pennsylvania. He's got to really out campaign what Hillary did in 2016, which was pretty bad. But Joe's sitting in a basement, calling it a day at 930, 10 o'clock. When he does go to Pennsylvania or these other states, he's got, you know, a handful of people there and a teleprompter. And the, the irony of all this is, if you read the news lately, what are the Democrats planning to do to try to win Pennsylvania? Who are they sending there? Who's the big shot that they're sending to Pennsylvania to campaign for them? Barack Obama. And what happened during Barack Obama's eight years as president in Pennsylvania? They hemorrhaged 300,000 voters. They hemorrhaged 300,000 voters and lost in 2016 at the end of Barack Obama's second term. Why do they think that Barack Obama is going to go there and turn this around? Barack Obama isn't their solution to the problem. You could very easily say, looking at the registration numbers, Barack Obama and the, the policies that Barack Obama and the progressives have followed since 2008, are the problem itself. So they're sending the guy that hemorrhaged Democrat voters in Pennsylvania to bail out Joe Biden in Pennsylvania. Does that make a lot of sense? What are they thinking? You know, I, I, I really, I don't understand how the Democrats are campaigning this time around. I didn't understand it in 2012. But again, I'm not Nate Silver. What could I possibly know? I'm just some you know, retired historian sitting around in Florida making videos on YouTube. So what are the conclusions I draw from this, especially in context of what I did with Florida? And I think there are a couple, couple of conclusions I would draw. Uh, the first is Joe Biden's in big trouble in Pennsylvania and Florida. That seems simple enough. Secondly, I would conclude he's going to lose. Probably be by between 250 and 350,000 in Florida somewhere around 200 to 300,000 in Pennsylvania. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what the numbers suggest. Unless that they get seemingly miraculous turnout from the Democrats. I mean, even in Philadelphia, which is overwhelmingly Democratic, they've hemorrhaged support. They've lost about their edge and voter edge in, in Philadelphia, county and city are con contiguous, uh, by about 70,000 votes. You know, that was the margin of victory in 2016. If they had held on to their voter base just in Philadelphia, Hillary Clinton would have won Pennsylvania. But they didn't. And it's getting worse in Philadelphia. Not that any time a Republican is going to take over the city. But basically, the Democrats live in Pennsylvania on the big, you know, uh, overwhelming victories they have in places like Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and a few others where they're... they're center of the party turnout is. They can't afford to lose Philadelphia. Not, not to lose the city overall, but to lose their edge in Philadelphia. They need it to produce votes that overwhelm the rest of the state. And the 70,000 they lost, basically Philadelphia cost them the election in uh, 2016. Another conclusion I would draw is that the narrative of the 2016 election that we're presented with by Democrats and Republicans is total bull. I mean, what are Republicans, how did the Republicans explain 2016? Trump energized everybody, he campaigned hard, there was lots of enthusiasm. Hillary Clinton ran a crappy campaign and Trump won. That's the narrative. The Democrat narrative is the election was stalled. Macedonian bots, Russian interference. Both those narratives are not supported by what you can see in Pennsylvania and Florida on the ground going back to 2008. The hemorrhaging of Democrat supports, support in 
voter registration support in both of these swing states started in 2008. I think people see you know, Barack Obama election of 2008 as the sort of a, a high point, you know, the, the progressive takeover of a country. You know, it's, it, they're, they're there. They solidified their control. It may actually be seen in retrospect. It's still too early to tell as sort of a high watermark of progressivism. Because if you look at Pennsylvania and Florida, since 2008, it's been going downhill. And I'm going to do North Carolina next. And the same thing is going to be true there. You can see the Democrats steadily losing control since Barack Obama's election in 2008. Now, you know, people had a vision of what he was going to do, how the country was going to change with him in power. And either it happened to the extent that a lot of people didn't like what was happening and started switching over to Republicans, or he disappointed people and people started switching over to Republicans or some combination of the two. I mean, I think in, in some ways, you know, at a personal level, I felt disappointed. I actually thought well, I didn't vote for Barack Obama either time. When he won in 2008, I thought he might do a lot more than he did. Positive things. I mean, I didn't think he was going to be seeming to be as inept and inconsequential as he turned out to be, in my opinion. You know, I, I have a much uh, more negative opinion of him by 2012 and 2016 as I did in 2008. I had hope. I think a lot of that hope dissipated afterwards. And apparently it wasn't just me. So if you look at these narratives, they're out of it. If you look at, you know, the real narrative is since 2008, things have been going downhill for the Democrats. The more they push the progressive agenda, the more people swing to the other side. It's almost like cause and effect. You know, so, at least I say, I don't know, you know a, in physics, you know, every action is an equal and opposite reaction. In politics, I think every political action is an equal and opposite reaction. You know, Barack Obama's the reaction to Barack Obama's policies and progressive policies since 2008 are pushing people over toward the Republicans. And I think that's the position Joe Biden finds himself in in 2020. And in Pennsylvania and Florida, he's got a tough job. I, my, my prediction would be looking at the numbers and looking at the trends. He's not going to pull it off. He's going to lose both of them by fair, sub, substantial margins. And I think we need to rethink the Obama presidency. Now, maybe you know, this is just two states. I know there, there, there are still another 48, and I'm not going to do them all. There's not enough time before the election. But Pennsylvania you know, and, and Florida are very different kinds of states. It's not like you were talking like North and South Carolina or, you know, California and uh, Oregon or Washington. I mean, you got, you know, Pennsylvania's up there, Florida's way down here, very different people, very different cultures, very different histories. And yet, if you look at the trends, they're the same. They're the same. I don't know. You know, it, it, you would think, well, if all the Republicans moved to Florida from Pennsylvania, Republican the Democratic voter edge, registration edge would improve. It hasn't. It's gone downhill. So you can't say it's it's that, you know, unless the Democrats are moving to Florida. But if they're moving to Florida, they're coming here and they're re-registering as Republicans. I mean, these are the forces that are at work. And it has nothing to do. I mean, I'm not saying that Trump didn't campaign hard. He, he doesn't generate a lot of political enthusiasm among his supporters. He does. And I'm not saying Hillary didn't win a, run a crappy campaign. But remember, Biden's running an even worse campaign. If Hillary Clinton ran an unenthusiastic campaign, what the hell is Joe Biden doing in his basement? Fiddling around with his mask, taking the mask off and coughing into his hand and then putting it back up. I mean, you know, I don't care how the media portrays this. People see this stuff. You know, and, and not everybody, you know... <laughs> They like to say that the people who vote for Trump, you know, aren't college educated, a lot of them. Now, you know, it doesn't offend me that much. I'm, I do have a PhD, but, you know, what the hell. But maybe that's the Democrats' problem, unless the people have been educated and been indoctrinated by, you know, quasi-Marxist or full Marxist or full socialist or full communist professors. They don't buy the crap that the Democrats are selling. And there's still a lot of people who don't go to college in this country. And with the pandemic, there's even fewer of them. I think uh, freshman enrollment's down quite a bit nationally. So Biden's got a tough time ahead of him. 
And again, if you, if you look at the trends in these two states, in North Carolina, I'm going to do next, portends a very difficult road ahead for the Democrats. Things are not going their way. And that seems obvious to me. So what do you think? Let me know in a comment. Got some state you'd like to see me tackle along the line? Let me know about that too. Uh, if you found something useful in this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate that. Hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button. Share the video with your friends. And overall, get out and vote on November 3rd if you haven't already. And confront the resistance. Don't give up. Don't panic. Don't get down. And remember that what we need to do is keep fighting.